there was a verse in the Old Testament, and it's in Numbers 15, 37. And the Israelites had messed up again. They were feeling defeated <laughs> in their culture. Um, and I thought, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. The Israelites were fe feeling defeated. They were messing up. And so God said to Moses, tell the people to make for themselves a tassel with a cord of blue so that every time their eye sees it, they'll remember that who I am, I'm the living God and who they are in me and what I called them to do. Now, in, fast forward to the New Testament in um, the verse where the hemorrhaging woman pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of Jesus' robe for healing. He would have worn that tassel with the blue cord. Now, you mm. and I, we don't have to wear that blue cord tassel today because um, we're under the New Testament. And yet we have the, the kind of the blue cord of the Holy Spirit running through us to remind us who God is, who we are in him and what he called us to do in our generation. We are the generation that hold the keys to the faith of the next. And women especially are especially suited to reach those Muslim moms, Hindu moms, Buddhist moms, who are raising up their kids to follow Jesus as they know him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it calls for moral courage in culture in our generation. Karen Bajani joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. She is the author of the book, The Blue Cord, the host of the Blue Cord podcast and co-founder of I Hope Ministries. Joining us today, it is the 2022 National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville. So when we look at this blue cord, I love that image that you were just sharing. It's a biblical image really about testifying to the glory of God. Yes. And you are uniquely equipping women in mm -hmm. their sphere of influence, as you might say, to reach people cross-culturally. Yeah. Because as, as we look at, at what takes place here in, in America, you have people coming in from, from all sorts of countries with a variety of different religious and cultural backgrounds. So how do you equip women to be more skilled and effective, I guess you might say, in, in sharing their yeah. faith. Yeah. So you know what? It starts with our thoughts. Because if we are not thinking about the nations living among us, and if we are thinking that missionaries and church planners are the ones that do this work, yeah. um, then it won't be in our even our radius of action. Um, if we are thinking that we are fearful about uh, women who are different than us, or men, you know, women are men of Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu faith. If we walk out and our Hindu next door neighbor is at the mailbox, and I'm at mine, if I think I am not equipped for this, I am going to run back into my house and I'm not going to say a word. And yet it's not as hard as we imagine. So when we begin to raise awareness and, and check our thinking and say, okay, I'm going to move beyond this place of in my comfort zone and I'm going to step into a place of discomfort um, to pursue what God's called me to do. And he has called each one of us to be an authentic Christian witness in our sphere of influence. Then when we say, okay, I got to lean into this, then I can learn a few quick skills that I can do anywhere all the time. Mm. An example, please. Okay. <laughs> well, um, five quick things, and okay. I, I'll just cover a couple. One is really obvious, and that is to love in words, actions, and deeds. Uh -huh. Sure. And so um, we all know we should love, but what does that look like in really practical ways? Like if I said to you, um, Bob, how did you love your neighbor this past week? I know for me, I would say, oh, yeah, we should love our neighbor, but what does that really look like? Well, that means um, loving them means letting them know about salvation in Jesus. Now, so it starts small. You want to look for a person of peace. That's someone God is mm. wooing to himself um, because we can't bring anyone to Christ. And so we have to look for signs that that might be a person of peace. So for me, I identify myself as a follower of Jesus right away. I quote Romans 10, 9. I'm a follower of Jesus. Here's what that means. Um, in America, we're often told, don't talk about religion and politics, but to people of other faiths and cultures, they expect it. They expect that if, if yeah. you really believe yeah. in, in your faith, you'll be talking about it. Um, and if not, they think you're ashamed of your faith. So lean in. I'm a follower of Jesus. Here's what that means. And then quote Romans 10, 9 to them. They've never heard that. They're not going to immediately say, oh, great, you know, sign me up because it's completely polar opposite to their worldview. But just share 